Hello guys, welcome back to the show. In today's video, I would like to show you how you can do a JWT authentication with React Router and TypeScript. So as you can see my screen, I have over here name, app, token, and the token is null. But if I now log in, right, so I create full.demo.com and I type in a password and I click this, as you can see over here, I do have an app token and a token that I can use to make the next request to the backend server. For the backend of this application, I'm using Scala, but you don't really have to worry about it. You can use Node.js or Ruby or anything that you want. What we are going to do is worry about the front end, how to handle JWT token with React Router. So what we are going to do is that we are going to use Use Reducer from React. Now, let me quickly explain what the use reducer API and the use contest API are. The use contest API is a React hook that lets you add or subscribe to a contest from your component. Okay? But the main thing that it does is that it allows us to easily pass data deeply into the tree. What do I mean by that? What I mean by this is that if I have a use contest and then I wrap the parent comp component around the children component, I can pass the state, okay, deeply down to the children component easily. So that is what we are going to use the use contest for in this scenario. The use reducer is also an API that is given to us by React. What it does is that it allows us to add a reducer to our component. Now, someone will ask, what is a reducer? As you see over here, a reducer is a function that houses, that holds all the logic of how the state within our application gets updated. So what it will do is that it will take a state, an action as an argument, and then return a new state. Now, the this part is essentially a function that updates the state value and always triggers a re-render, all right? So we will use the dispatch. It's like saying, hey, I want you to log in. We dispatch a login event, and then that will update the state. If we have a look at the code, you can see that I have something called op provider. I'm using React TypeScript, so if you are used to vanilla JavaScript, I'll do my best to explain to you what everything is doing, okay? So what I have over here is that I have an auth provider. The auth provider will take in as a prop something called children. Now, this children will be the children, as I explained earlier on, they will be this children, all right? They will be this over here. So the auth provider will be the thing that has the parents, all right? That has all the data, it has the states that I need, and then I'll wrap that around the children. So the children is what I am passing down as a prop. So I'm saying that this will have a children, and then the children is of type auth provider prop. So that auth provider props is just an interface called auth provider props that has children, which is a JS element, okay? And a JS element is essentially a component, all right, that I want to pass through. As I mentioned before, the reducer is the thing that we are going to use to have the logic of everything to do with our states. So the use reducer, I have a token reducer. And this reducer, as you can see over here, is essentially a function that has got a state and then an action. The state, as it says, is the state. And I have um, said that I want my state to have a name, which is of type string, and a token, which is of type string, and then no, okay? So initially, it's going to be no, but then when I do provide the token, when the user logs in, it will become a string. So I have a state of type state and an action of type action. And the action, as you can see over here, I have specified two action types. One is set token 
If you set the token, you provide a payload and the payload is essentially the token, okay? What I want to pass um, as part of the dispatch, okay? When I'm sending the event to set the token, what am I giving, what am I using to set the token? And that's the payload. And then I have another action type called remove token. And this is a simple switch statement, which is saying that when someone you calls this reducer, the person will provide a state and then an action. If the action type is set token, what I want you to do is to call local storage. Um, there are benefits and disadvantages of using local storage um, to store token. Um, just for simplicity, I'm using local storage over here, okay? And what I'm saying over here is that use local storage to set a key called token and then set that token value to the action payload, which is the actual token, okay? And then once that is done, I return the state. So the state will be the name and then the token and then I research, okay? the token to be the new token so i'm essentially returning a new state but this time around this state is going to have the token that i get from the back end and then i have remove token which is used to log out because when someone clicks on log out what i want to do is that i want to remove the token from local storage and this is what i mean so over here as you can see, um, when I log in, it changes to log out. And you can see from the application over here that there is a token and then the value is the token that I've provided. But when I click on log out, I want to clear that token. That is essentially what I just showed you. And the last part is essentially saying that if someone sends an action and the action is something that I do not know um, through an error and then I can handle the error later on. So that is essentially it for the reducer. I've set the reducer, which is this thing over here that I've just showed you. And then the initial state is that I want to set the name to the app token that is the name and then for the token i'm saying local storage dot get token but initially when i say local storage dot get item token obviously the token doesn't exist at the beginning before a user logs in that's the reason why if you look at the type it is string and then no all right so it is it could be string it could be no so initially it is no so that is it for the use reducer. And now I have a set token handler. The set token handler, what it does is that I pass it a token and then I set the dispatch, which is what I have over here. I put within the dispatch a type. I specify the type to be set token and then I provide the payload. And as you can see, this type, which is the set token, is essentially the type that I have over here. So when the action or type is set token, then I want you to execute what I have over here. That is essentially it. So I have a set token, which sets the token as the name suggests. Then I have a clear token handler, which essentially removes the token when a user logs out. And then I have use memo. And then use memo, all it's doing is that it is used to cache some data. And then I've passed in the state. So when the state changes, this thing gets cleared, okay? It's like you are clearing your cache and then you are taking a new data within the cache. So whenever the state changes, this thing gets executed again, essentially. That's what it's doing. And then as you can see, I've got odd contest to a provider and what is this odd contest? This odd contest is essentially the use contest that I mentioned before. Create contest is what we use to create the contest. And then use contest is what we use when we want to use the contest. As you can see, I'm creating a contest and I'm saying that the contest is called odd provider contest. And this odd provider contest has got a state 
which has got a name which is of type string a token which is of type string or no and then it has a set token handler which is a function that takes in a token of type string and then returns void and then a clear token which is a function that returns void and i have set the initial value to no that's the reason why i'm saying that the create contest is either of contest provider contest or no all right so i've set it initially to no and then i use it over here so i say of contest dot provider and then i provide it the value which is the contest which is what i cached all right so the memo and as you can see this thing is exactly the same type as i have okay so the type that i said i was going to provide this contest was the state set token handler and then clear token handler and that's exactly what i have over here okay i have a state set token handler and then clear token handler the state is the name and i want the name to be state.name and this state.name is essentially this state.name so it will use this name and then token is state.token it will use this local storage.get item token and because this thing can be null that's the reason why we have null over here and that's it so we have the auth provider which returns an auth contest or provider with the value and the value is the contest which is what we have over here and um, and then that's it we have a use auth contest which is essentially a use contest okay which we get from react and then we are passing in the contest and what this contest is is this contest right we are passing in the create contest over here now that we have this all we have to do now is to find a way to use this so if i go into the login page as you can see over here the login i have imported the use auth contest okay the use auth contest is essentially this okay so i have exported this over here and i've imported it in the login component or the login page and within the login page all i'm saying is that when someone um, clicks on the submit button i want to make a request to the back end i want to make a request to the back end server and if the request is successful what i'm saying is that i want the contest and i want to set the token this contest is essentially the contest that i've set over here what i want to do is i want to set the token to the token that i get from the back end so as i mentioned before the way that jwt works is that you make a request to the back end initially when you log in the back end will give you a token okay and we're using that token what you can do is that whenever you're making a request to a protected route on the back end server you add that token to your headers all right so i have that token now and i've set the token over here and this function as we saw before it will take in a token and then when it does take the token it will dispatch that token it will create the set token dispatch that and then that will get stored within my reducer which is this place okay and then it gets returned back to me so that is it for the login and then if i go to the route i do have my login okay and all i've done is that i have wrapped um and then i've exported this app route what you can see is that i have this auth provider and this auth provider what it has is that it wraps around the app route and this app route has got the login route okay it's got the login component which is this login over here so the data as we saw over here when we use the contest will be passed down to all the children component that are wrapped around auth provider now the last piece of the puzzle is to use your token for protected route so as you can see over here i've got a component called protected route it uses the use navigate which we get from react and then it also has the auth 
contest. Okay, and essentially what this protected route, what it's going to do is that if the state hasn't got the token, so if it is null and you try to access a route which is protected, I will navigate you to the main page, else I'll return the outlet. And the outlet is essentially the children. Okay, so I've not implemented the protected route yet, but if I wanted to, all I'll have to do to protect a route is that I'll have to go into the route over here. Because we have routes over here, all I need to do is to do protected route. So I'll do protected route like so. And underneath the protected route, I can provide my children. I hope this makes sense. So yeah, that's it from me guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.